You're listening to the Nature's Image Farm Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Burns, and we're talking bees, homesteading, and the old-time ways. This episode is brought to you by EnduraHive Wax-Dipped Equipment. No paint, no rot, no hassle. EnduraHive. Built to endure. Now, on to the show. Guys, I'm here with the one and only Bob Benny here at the EMBA conference in St. Louis. It's fun to um, be crossing paths with you a lot, Bob. Well, we should see each other about two or three times a year, I guess. Yeah. I uh, had some great times with you in the truck and the bee yards, uh, interviewing you, spending some time with you. It's fun to uh, see you bouncing all across the country. You, got, you had a great talk, and I, this morning I woke up thinking, you know, if I had a chance to get Bob on the camera, what, what would I ask him? I, I've got two things that came to mind. Okay. In your, um, not that long ago, I had the opportunity to sit down with Chris Werner. Yeah. And uh, a really smart guy. And he, he brought something up that I hadn't, he, everyone has their own way of describing their experience. Um, but he, when he talked to the condition last year of where the imbalance seemed to be with bees and virus and beekeepers, you know, he made a direct correlation to the wheat and the tear and that what he feels is though the the imbalance with keeping bees alive and the struggle is a is a direct result of the dysfunction that we see as a human race on earth right now in this picture that was last year fast forward to right now everyone watching this video uh, you can't be you have all heard some of the early reports by seemingly catastrophic loss that may even outshadow the initial CCD. What are your thoughts on that, Bob? Where, where do you think we are with this right now? Well, you know, you heard Corey, he mentioned he thought it would probably inevitably come around to mites and mite treatments and things. I actually think it goes a little deeper than yeah. that. Randy Oliver once said something in one of his articles, he called it the leaky boat syndrome. And he said mm-hmm. you can have a boat that has a lot of little leaks in it, and you can still keep it afloat by bailing, but suddenly you get one or two big leaks and your boat won't float anymore. We, we're getting another leak in the boat right now, and they've yet to figure out what that leak is. Is it an exotic virus coming out in from another continent? Are the mites up to something that we're unaware of? It could be a combination. It's just one of those perfect storm things that we don't understand. Now, this is an interesting fact. When CCD was occurring, I uh, listened to a lecture where somebody showed a graph, a line, of all the very extreme uh, bee kill-offs over the last 120 years. And this happens every 18 or 20 years, all way back in mm-hmm. 1900. And in every case, there was never an explanation. Not one time. You get these extreme die-offs and nobody could ever explain it. And we may be here again. There may be no one that comes up with a good explanation. No. Yeah. As beekeepers, we're looking for the solution. We're looking for, like, what do we know right now? How can we protect? How can we move forward? A lot, like you said, sometimes you, you can't. And in our neck of the woods, a lot of parts of the country, I mean, it was it was a year of extremes, one way or the other. Extreme wet, extreme uh, weather. For us, we had record drought that we've never seen from June all the way through with no flow in the fall. The plants were not, even goldenrod could barely produce enough pollen for that survival mechanism, but did not have enough moisture to produce nectar everything was in survival mode i don't wonder if it's a combination of some nutritional deficiencies no matter how much we supplement well you know it ha- it's happening all around the country all around so the that country kind of tends me to shy away from that from nutrition idea and chemicals i mean did we all ex- experience the same chemical problem at the same time uh, i don't think so yeah i'm doing fine i don't knock on wood we, right we have less than 10 percent die off at this point which is normal for us so we're doing normal i can report like whether this has a part of it or not we've done a lot of alcohol washes lately and we cannot find a mite in our outfit i know they're there of course but we're getting zeros we also did all these alcohol washes when the bees were broodless so if it's ever going to be accurate that's the time we can't find a mite so is that why we're okay well 
so I, I I don't have we don't we don't have the number of colonies and the years of experience to support this. But for the last nearly three years, I've been asking the question, even with folks like Marla, trying to get in to better understand this. We tend to see this thing happening where we do mite washes and very little or no mites. But you look at the colony and something's not quite right. You go to other colonies with astronomical mite counts and they are beautiful, lusterful, producing crops and are and I asked her, I said, Marla, is it possible, for lack of better words, that we have new or different viruses that are acting like super spreaders, even in low mite count populations that are affecting the bees in ways that we don't fully understand as compared to colonies that may have a ton of mites, but they don't have these specific virus strains. How about, absolutely possible, but how about this idea? How about the mites themselves are changing, not just resistant mm. to certain chemicals, but is there something in the mites that ah. we recognize? You know, we do have this amitraz resistance showing up. Yeah. I, I'm not smart enough to know what's going on there, honestly, the genes and the, the whatever. But, uh, you know, are the mites changing in such a way that, you know, they're affecting us differently than they did right. in the past? I don't know. You know, they're a vector of so much of this stuff. Uh, and are we capable of even recognizing these viruses and pathogens, something that's exotic? And you and I, we relate a little bit the same way. Maybe the planet's just lined up wrong. <laughs> maybe know. this it's, well, it's cyclical. Maybe it's just cyclical. Yeah, you actually said nature, it in your talk. Yeah, everything in nature does this. Right? Yeah. You've been after it for... 40 some years right yeah right and one thing that you did mention in your talk is if you're beekeeping like it's this it's, it's, it's and you mentioned it yeah. we're have we have heavy loss now and we'll bounce back and in the future we're going to have the same that's part of the ride maybe and sometimes with no obvious explanation conclusion honestly yeah. and it yeah. could be the nutrition related to a new mite related to a virus that came in from korea really i mean it's all just, those leaks in yeah, the boat who knows yeah. yeah bob for folks who are who are either broken hearted, they've lost all their colonies, they're trying to figure out the path forward. What words of wisdom would you have for those folks who are working through this right now? Well, Hi, I'm Greg Burns, founder of Nature's Image Farm and Endura Hive Wax Dipped Equipment. Hey, as large family beekeepers, we saw a major need to do way better in protecting our investment with our beekeeping equipment from the elements for the long haul. So I coupled our practical beekeeping experience with our wood science background to create the Endura Hive wax dip line of beekeeping equipment. Our unique wax dip process expels water from the wood, replaces and impregnates it with our proprietary blend of micro crystalline wax, offering superior weather protection without the mess or expense of paint. Our equipment is protected from the weather inside and out, preventing box rot, fungal growth, and decomposition. That's a huge savings in both time and money. No more reworking tired, worn out boxes year after year. Our wax dipped equipment is proudly made in the USA. So protect your investment with Endura Hive wax dipped equipment. No paint, no rot, no hassle. Endura Hive, built to endure. Yeah. Bob, for folks who are who are either broken hearted, they've lost all their colonies, they're trying to figure out the path forward, what words of wisdom would you have for those folks who are working through this right now? I've used the word in the past and at one time was kind of well known for it, and that's the word tenacity. Uh, you have to be tenacious if you're going to get in this industry. As a hobbyist beekeeper, maybe it's not such a big deal, but if you're trying to make a living or even part of your living at this, you have to have tenacity as part of your makeup or you probably don't want to be a beekeeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to hang in there and know yeah. that there's going to be good and bad and just look at the 10 year average and decide whether it's worth it. Right. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first and I think that is something that you can put on your peanut butter sandwich. Right. Bob, cool thanks for you. everything. Yeah. It's good to see you too. We've been through a few adventures together. It's always good to see we you. We have, yeah. and I'll never forget those times. I tell folks about those um, all the time. And so for that, those opportunities, uh, those doors that were open, I'll never forget it. And we're, we're truly thankful. So thanks, One Bob. One of these days I'm gonna show up at your doorstep in Ohio. Okay, all right, cool. sounds good. good thanks, Bob.